Okay, chocolate's ready again. Um, and this time we need to make some green. Only don't actually have any green chocolate. I've only got some blue and some yellow color. Then we're gonna put some chocolate in here. You need to work quite quickly with this because whatever dish you put it into, even if it's only plastic, that chocolate is gonna to start to set really very quickly. So um, this is a complete eyeball here. I have no idea how much we need. Don't use a cocktail stick to put the color in. Don't put the same stick back in the pot. Once you've used it, you must discard it because we don't want to mix the colours. And take another stick and put some yellow in. And hopefully, by the time we've mixed the two together, we might get somewhere close to the colour we're looking for. If not, we need to go back and put in a bit more of the um, yellow colour with another cocktail stick. It's getting there. It's actually not as deep as I would have thought it would be. I've got messy fingers, so I will just wipe my fingers on this towel. You do need to keep something by you to um, wipe fingers up with because chocolate making is a bit of a messy thing to do. Another paper cone, spoon in our green. That's it, we really don't need much. We're only looking for a couple of teaspoonfuls tops. And put this aside. Here's our mold again. And pipe them back, fold the ends in, and squeeze the air out of it. Now, cut the absolute tiny bit of the end off. And we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to do the small ones first because they're tiny and I need the light round this way. And just pipe in to the area. It's in green. Give it a little tap, and that should level it out and get it into the corners. The small ones are more difficult to do. Let me just kind of whiz in through these now. The big one is um, much easier in comparison. So I'll just pipe that in there. Give it a tap to level it. It would have been near bubbles. And um, that's green done. Now we're ready to do the single semicolor. My chocolate is still molten enough. So I'm gonna scoop a whole load of this white chocolate. A bit more this time, because we've got a large area to fill into another cone bag. Now you see why I asked you to make half a dozen up before we got started. Right, I've got stacks of chocolate in there, more than enough. And yet again, so I'll just fold in the ends of my bag and I'm ready to pay. Now this is a much bigger area and it's much easier to do. The chocolate's hardening so fast here, it's near enough set already because we're dealing with such small quantities. Um, nip the end off the bag, and then fill in yet again. And fill in all that top area. Give it a tap, and it will level itself out to where the line is. And that one's done. On to the next one. You, see, you practice with one of the big cells first in one of these moulds and you'll find it much easier than doing the small ones but you know it's not that difficult
And you do need to work quite quickly because we don't want this to harden on it. We've very finished piping it. Give it up to level. Okay. And the big one. Just give it a tap. You'll see the chocolate leveling itself out so that it just becomes all nice and smooth and pretty. Um, got some more of this left. So what we'll do with the white that I've got here is um, I'll fill in the inside of this monkey mold and do him rather than waste this chocolate because I can just do brown on top. Um, you're not going to want lots of colours in a monkey. I'm just taking a bit much off, really, off the end of this piping bag. But the smaller the tip you put on it, the easier it is to fill in the bigger the tip. The more it floods, you could use this technique with um, royal icing as well. Yeah. Filling in flood icing. So basically our monkey is ready to go as well. The next step is to melt, wait for this to harden and then to melt up some dark chocolate. Because it takes a couple of, because it takes a minute or two to melt it, I'll get on with um, starting some milk chocolate. There we go. Now you'll need a piping bag for this. Easiest way to do it, least amount of mess. Um, it's also worth having a glass. Put your piping bag in the glass. Typically, I don't have a glass because I'm not at home and the kitchen's not set up yet, but I do have a piece of cardboard tube which will suffice for now. I'm going to pour my chocolate into my disposable piping bag. Like so. Hope it doesn't talk over. We're now pretty much good to go. Gather your piping bag up and give it a good twist at the top. Right. You want a small hole, take a little bit off, not too much. Um, if you take too much off, you can't put it back on and that chocolate is going to flow fast because um, it's, it's nice and molten. You know. Do is take a tiny bit off the end. You can always take more off so, you, so don't overdo it. There we go. Now, the, my previous layer has already set nice and hard, so by putting the tip in here and just giving a squeeze, not, not enough off the end. We're going to fill that cell. You want a smaller hole for doing the small cells. Too big a hole, you'll have chocolate absolutely everywhere. Could have probably gone slightly bigger than what I've got, but it's a do nicely. You've got your chocolate in the cell. Give them a mold, tap. 
and the chocolate's going to level itself. A bit more in there, you to fill it up. And another tap. Now the floor isn't in here isn't level, so my chocolates aren't going to be totally level. That's what happens with industrial units. But there's no room to video in my kitchen at all because there's just too little and pokey. and give it a tap. The tapping removes any air bubbles so that you don't get any big blotchy holes in it. Now, just to make sure I've got enough chocolate here, I'm going to do the big one next. I've taken a bit more off the end of the piping bag so that when I squeeze my chocolate runs faster. This is more volume to fill. This is quite a large bar, this large Christmas pudding chocolate comes out about 100 grams, which is about your average cake of lint. So, you know, it makes quite a nice gift on its own without the little ones, or you box them up in a matching set. There we go. Once again, give it a tap and it will self-level. Now, once you've done it all yourselves, you really need to go into the fridge to harden for about an hour before you even attempt to try and release it. 